Keto and intermittent fasting, one of the biggest diet trends you hear people talking about nowadays. But do get autophagy on the keto diet. Check out this video about autophagy and ketosis. Both autophagy and ketosis, they support each other, but they're not always mutually inclusive. You can be in ketosis without activating autophagy, and you can have autophagy without being in ketosis. Wait a minute. The thing is that in most circumstances, you see them happening at the same time, but they don't have to be happening simultaneously. Autophagy is the process of recycling old worn out cells during fasting and starvation. It's an important component of anti-aging and longevity seen in caloric restriction. Fasting is the most effective way of increasing autophagy. Ketosis is the metabolic state of high ketone production and utilization. It happens when your body's glycogen stores are depleted and the liver produces ketones that substitute glucose. You can be in ketosis while fasting or when eating a low-carb ketogenic diet. Autophagy gets activated under energy deprivation caused by amino acid deficiency, glucose restriction, fasting, exercise and thermoregulation. In the metabolism, you need low insulin, low mTOR and high AMPK. Ketosis is achieved under glucose restriction. The primary mechanism that leads to the creation of ketone bodies is liver glycogen depletion and carbohydrate deficiencies. Protein can also contribute to carbohydrate synthesis through gluconeogenesis, but it's secondary and doesn't affect ketosis that much. For that, you don't necessarily need low insulin or low mTOR, although it tends to happen. You can be in ketosis with high levels of mTOR and high levels of insulin because of having consumed something that's rich in protein and calories. It's going to maintain nutritional ketosis, but it will interfere with the autophagy process because of the nutrient signaling load of higher mTOR. Autophagy, on the other hand, doesn't require ketosis because you can fast for up to three to five days without entering into ketosis and staying in the sugar burning zone. Disappointed! However, usually when you're in ketosis, then you already meet the prerequisites for autophagy, such as low insulin, lower blood glucose, and suppressed mTOR. You just have to know how long have you been fasting for. It's said that in order to get into autophagy and ketosis, you need to fast for about 48 to 72 hours. However, how long it's gonna take for you to get into autophagy depends on the balance between your AMPK and mTOR status. There are no viable ways of measuring autophagy in humans, but it can be guesstimated by looking at your glucose ketone index and insulin to glucagon ratio. A lower insulin to glucagon ratio suggests more catabolism, ketogenesis, gluconeogenesis, fat oxidation and nutrient deprivation. A higher insulin to glucagon ratio suggests more anabolism, higher insulin, elevated blood sugar and nutrient storage. The glucose ketone index reflects an estimated insulin glucagon ratio with a lower score indicating higher ketosis and more AMPK and usually a lower score will indicate more autophagy. The most natural, the most easiest, and the most effective way of inducing autophagy as well as ketosis is to fast for an extended period of time. This is going to deplete your body's energy stores and ramps up ketone production. Autophagy is essential for synthesis of ketone bodies. Autophagy deficient mice have decreased production of ketones by the liver. Without adequate autophagy, you'll stay more in the sugar burning zone. Ketosis promotes brain macroautophagy by activating CERT1. Ketone bodies also stimulate chaperone mediated autophagy, or CMA, which targets only specific amino acids and other substrates. Beta hydroxybutyrate and other ketones tend to be high during fasting and starvation, but they're also elevated when eating the ketogenic diet. Being in ketosis while eating the ketogenic diet can support some form of chaperone mediated autophagy even while you're eating because it's low insulin, it's suppressed mTOR and low glucose. You would just have to restrict your carbs and protein a lot more. A ketogenic diet can decrease neuronal injury via autophagy and mitochondrial pathways in seizures. It mimics many aspects of the fasted physiology like lower insulin and mTOR. Certain fats like MCT oil or coconut oil boost the production of ketone bodies, which promotes chaperone mediated autophagy and ketosis. However, there's a thing that too many calories from whatever source, whether that be protein, carbs or fat, will still spike insulin a little bit and mTOR as well, so it's gonna stop the fast. Disappointed! With a low carb, moderate protein, high fat ketogenic diet, you will probably experience mild aspects of autophagy in between your meals because your glucose is low, your insulin is also low and mTOR is suppressed. If, however, you're doing some form of a higher protein ketogenic diet, then it's gonna probably take a longer time for you to gain the benefits of autophagy, but at the same time, you will experience those benefits faster because you don't have that much glycogen to burn through. I think that's one of the best reasons for doing some form of a lower carb diet because 
you will experience mild autophagy more frequently and you can go into it much faster. You maintain a higher level of metabolic flexibility and basal autophagy all the time. If you were to compare the benefits of keto versus intermittent fasting, then fasting would always win because autophagy is much more important for your longevity than ketosis. And all of the benefits of a keto diet are greatly magnified by extended fasting and not eating anything for days. With that being said, on a regular basis, I myself still think a keto diet that mimics the physiology of fasting a lot is somewhat of a good strategy for maintaining this semi fasted state most, most of the time. Possibly. The second best thing about it is that if you become keto adapted, then fasting becomes so much easier and you will spontaneously fast for longer and more frequently because you're not that hungry. You don't really need to eat any more than once a day. And if you do one meal a day with a keto diet, then that's probably the maximum amount of autophagy you can achieve during the 24 hour period. Any more than two meals a day is probably not going to give you a significant amount of autophagy because you're eating too frequently and even keto is not going to save you from that. So in any case, two meals a day would be the minimum and one meal a day with keto is probably the most optimal way of going about it. Other things that will help to speed up the process are physical exercise, resistance training, caloric restriction, consuming some autophagic compounds and foods, heat saunas, cold exposure and other cool stuff. If you want to know how to optimize autophagy with intimate fasting, optimal nutrition, food combining and meal timing, then check out my book Metabolic Autophagy. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay autophagic, stay empowered. Disappoint!